Hi, I'm Dimitri from Ergo Cosplay, and it is my turn to do the monthly roundup. So this is my February favourites. The first category is anime, and I'm not a massive anime watcher, because my hearing problem means that sometimes it's very difficult to focus on subtitles when you're hearing sound, and dubbed animes sometimes are very good, sometimes aren't. Sometimes very much aren't. I found a couple of animes this month I've really, really enjoyed. The first of which being Violet Evergarden, which is about a young girl who was raised in the military, sort of as a weapon to fight. So she's never really had a normal life, and then obviously the war ends, and she's left by herself. She's lost someone dear to her, she can't get in contact with them, and she's been thrown into this new life, and she actually becomes an auto-memories doll, which is a really weird fancy name that I've never heard of, I'm pretty sure it's just for the series, for someone who writes letters. So you go to them and you tell them their feel your feelings, and they'll either write a legal document for you, or help you put your love letter into words, and send it for you. Um, and she becomes this doll to try and understand the emotions that she's never really had the chance to know herself. My second anime, which I've really gotten into, is Ka Kagagori, or Kakagori, and it is set in a high school for rich kids. Very, very, very rich kids, and it runs on a gambling system. A lot of the students play games between themselves, and it can actually be a way to really push your status through the school. Uh, people bet all sorts, and if you lose a lot, a bad stuff can happen for it to you. I don't really want to spoil it. And it follows a new girl who's just joined, and she's not really what everyone's expecting. And I really, really enjoyed it. It's a little bit violent at times, a little bit explicit at times, a lot of heavily implied lady love, if you know what I mean. Very well done, lady love, though. There's no graphic nudity, and there's no... I don't think there's graphic, graphic violence. But there's a lot of implied things and a lot of things you can assume could be censored. In a and then another one I'm not going to be able to say properly because I can't say words properly, but Ancient Ma Magus or Magus? Magus? Ancient Magus Bride. Which I really, I only just started this one. I know it's been coming out for a little bit. It's still coming out now. And as far as I know, it's about an, an ancient, powerful mage who he buys... It's a bit creepy, but he buys a girl at auction. I don't really know. I think she's like a captured warrior or something like that. And he sets her free and says, you're going to become my apprentice and I'm going to teach you magic or how to utilise your magic better. Um, this one's been... It's been anticipated for quite a while. I've heard really good things about it. I've only got through the first couple of episodes, but again, really nicely animated and just enjoyable to watch. And there's a dubbed and a subbed version, so whatever you like. Next category is games. There's not been a massive amount of games released in my kind of sphere. I know there's a lot of PS4 and Xbox One games coming out, but I don't have those systems. I have an Xbox 360, a DS, and a Switch. As following on from Kieran's review last month, I am still playing Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. I am speeding through the levels. I've just hit level 60. I'm enjoying all the little festivals they do, and I'm a little bit obsessed. The next game I wanted to talk about was Night in the Woods, which I've not played masses of. Yet. Yet. It's on the Switch, I think, primarily. It might only be on the Switch. And 
it's a really nice cartoon, like 2D cartoony style, but a really nice graphics. And I can't say that much about it other than it is really beautiful and very calming to play. Books. I don't get a chance to read many, many books, but I've got a couple that I've been reading over this month that I can definitely recommend. Uh, the first one is this one. Oh, I'm kidding. It works excellently as a, a substitute for dumbbells while weightlifting. It can flatten just about anything can break your back as you carry it, or bludgeon someone to death. It also can help you pass your course. Uh, the next book I'd recommend, it's been out a really long time, but I've been on and off reading it. I lost my copy for ages, and I got my new copy. So, it's called Wool by Hugh Howey. I definitely recommend this. It is set in a dystopian future, where the land is too radiated and all of that to live outside so everyone's living in an underground silo and it's split into lots of levels you've got kids who apprentice different areas a little bit like city of ashes if you've seen that movie but this is more psychological and it's all about how people deal with living underground the pressures that build up the class system and it's really, really in-depth, it's really good, but it's about, uh, I won't spoil the plot, it's about one woman in particular, and she primarily lives down in the maintenance area, at the bottom of the silo, and then she's upgraded to sheriff, and then she starts discovering some of these conspiracies, and people not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And the next book I would recommend, again, been out a while, I don't get the chance to go to bookstores, is Hex by Thomas Old Huvelt. Huvelt, I think. Uh, this is great. I love mythological magical stuff. Uh, but this is really cool because it's in a modern, modern setting. So it's set in Black Spring, which is a nice town, but it's cursed. You can't leave. If you leave, you become insanely depressed insanely quickly, and you don't last very long. So everyone's stuck in this town, and it follows a couple of different perspectives. It follows the sheriffs who are kind of involved in keeping all these, all the, the order. It's about the people who've ended up moving there and therefore getting the curse. And it's about the children who've been born into these families, who've inherited this curse. They can't even go away to go to college or anything like that. They can barely last three days outside. And the curse is because of a witch who was chained up and had her eyes and her mouth sewn up. But she didn't die. She just keeps wandering the town. It's been like three, four hundred years. She just keeps wandering the town. She usually has her routine, um, and she'll randomly appear in your home, but it's also got the more modern day element of, that you don't always get with magical or, you know, curse stories. So they've, they've adapted. There's no ph photography or filming of the witch. And they even have an app to like track her location because she has a tendency to appear in different people's houses at random times. And they've got so many weird ways of hiding her from the general public because of course they've got to have tourists, otherwise they wouldn't have an industry. Um, this is really good. I won't spoil any more than that, but it is really good. Films. Uh, the next category is films. So the first film I recommend is Coco which is the new Disney Pixar film, and it is amazing. It is set uh, very family focused on a Mexican family celebrating Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead, and I murdered that name. I'm gonna keep saying the Day of the Dead so I don't have to embarrass myself. So it's really focused on the culture and I'm really happy with how they did it. 
I was very worried, especially after I absolutely adored The Book of Life, which came out a, while, a very long time ago now, I think at least a year or two. And, but this one's more of a, that was more of a romance film, whereas this is a very much a family film, like a, a family love orientated, but it is beautifully animated, gorgeous, wonderful soundtrack and songs, and it's just, it's really uplifting, it's really, it's very emotional at times, but it is just marvellous, and it, it focuses more on the older side of family, like grandparents and stuff, which you don't often get, you get very much, you know, your parents and that sort of thing, but it focuses very much on the generations of the family. The next film I recommend is The Greatest Showman. Finally got round to seeing it. I loved it. And I was very worried because I know about P.T. Barnum and I know about his history and how he was not a good man. But they've taken it and they've morphed it into a really uplifting movie. And the songs, the songs and the dances are amazing. They, they kind of fill you up. You want to get up and dance along, they just, they touch your soul, like, it's good soul music, and it's really nice, like, it, the, the cast is amazing, the costumes are amazing, all of the members of the circus are fabulous, and it's really uplifting in the sense that, unlike the real P.T. Barnum, it was really all about taking something that people would laugh at and people would make fun of and being who they are and being amazing and I just can't recommend it enough I've been blasting the soundtrack Mixture of Coco and Greatest Showman has been my last couple of weeks I've done a lot of crafting I've been making Kravitz from the Adventure Zone podcast which I again can't recommend enough love it uh, so there's been a mixture of sewing and embroidery and actually this is something I'm really proud of which is my mask and you can see here I got a white base mask and this is what it looks like now and I have sanded the whole thing and then I used my Dremel to cut these lines in they're actually just cut in, not painted on. You can see a little bit from the shadowing there. Um, and I crafted the teeth out of warbler scraps. And then I've, I really enjoyed painting and kind of shadowing him correctly. So you've got that little bit of cheekbone. And it's a lovely pearlescent white, which I've so enjoyed using. I just love painting pearlescent paints. And then I've also been crafting my new Raven cosplay, which you might have seen before, we did, I already technically debuted Raven, but I didn't quite do it up to the standard I wanted to, I ran out of time, a lot of it was kind of stuck together last minute, so I've been stretching myself, literally and figuratively, by learning how to craft my own Lycra bodysuit, which I would show you, but I think it's pinned to the desk currently where my new sewing machine is, which is lovely and silent. But um, I'm really, really excited to debut the new Raven, new wig, new cape, new everything. February was a good month. I'm excited for next month as well. It's going to be a really good one. I hope Scott has fun doing the, uh, the March Roundup alongside two conventions. So I am Dimitri from Ergo Cosplay. I'm not due again till May, which will be super exciting for reasons that will be revealed in May. Gotta keep you interested somehow. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed watching, thank you for watching, and I really hope you've enjoyed some of the things that I've recommended, because I really enjoyed them, and I hope you do too. Um, and as Kieran says, we don't actually have a send-off, so I'm going to copy him. Stay groovy. <laughs> Bye.
This is what I mean when I say I can't hear you over the sound of Legend of Zelda screaming. Legend of Zelda. I have a problem.